The Eagles' Hotel California is a timeless song that speaks of American excess and the rock and roll high life. Too few songs out there exposing the dark underbelly of society in such a romantically terrifying way. Transpiring like a movie, moving from scene to scene like an episode of The Twilight Zone, Hotel California, originally titled Mexican Reggae, yes, we'll get to that, is also about a bunch of kids from the Midwest becoming seduced and enchanted by California's glamorous allure. This is the story of Hotel California. Musically, this song has a demanding flow to it, reminiscent of Bohemian Rhapsody. Undulating harmonies, seductive progressions, and possibly one of the most wonderfully composed guitar solos to grace a song. Developed by Don Felder as he drew inspiration while vacationing on a beach house in Malibu Beach, Don recorded an infant and instrumental version of Hotel California with just a 12-string guitar, bass, and drum machine along with a few other songs. When Don Henley, drummer and co-lead singer for the Eagles, first heard the instrumental to Hotel California, he immediately knew it had something special, remarking, it sounds like a Mexican reggae. Funny enough, Mexican reggae was Hotel California's first working title. So they have the structure for the song, but no lyrics. Don Henley and Glenn Frey decided to write it as a duo, where Glenn would come up with the concept and Don Henley would make it work lyrically. Glenn and Don drew inspiration from a few different places. They wanted it to open like an episode of The Twilight Zone. Everything seems normal, but eventually things get all sorts of bonkers. Frey also was influenced by literature, saying, We take this guy and make him like a character in The Magus, where every time he walks through a door, there's a new version of reality. We wanted to write a song just like it was a movie, just one shot to the next, a picture of a guy on the highway, a picture of the hotel. The guy walks in, the door opens, strange people. We decided to create something strange just to see if we could do it. If you think that concept is weird enough, just remember, Don Henley had to make an intelligible set of lyrics for this mind-bending song. And as he pens some seriously great storytelling about a man tired from the road who so happens to waltz into this haunted hotel, Don actually cushions a completely subversive set of lyrics just underneath the obvious. He says, on just about every album we made, there was some kind of commentary on the music business and on American culture in general. The hotel itself could be taken as a metaphor not only for the myth-making of Southern California, but for the myth-making that is the American dream, because it's a fine line between the American dream and the American nightmare. Don was actually pretty cheeky with his lyrics. For instance, the lines, her mind is Tiffany twisted, she got the Mercedes Benz, she got a lot of pretty, pretty boys she calls friends, is actually a jab at his ex-girlfriend, Lori Rodkin. Yikes, could you imagine being immortalized in that way in such a popular song? And Don even says hello to Steely Dan with the lyrics, they stab it with their steely knives, but they just can't kill the beast. This was a response to a Steely Dan song, Everything You Did, where he says, turn up the eagles, the neighbors are listening pretty cool. So as you know, the song basically topped all the charts forever. I mean, everybody loves this song. It's got everything, sex, drugs, rock and roll, monsters, the unknown, all wrapped up in a dynamically beautiful song. But I want to leave you with a question to ponder, and I kind of want to rant a little about how we think about musicians. We all have our reasons for why we write the way we do or what we write at all. But sometimes people can be oddly critical, as if they know how to write a song like Hotel California better. In an interview with John Soder, Don Henley is asked if he regrets writing the words, so I called up the captain, please bring me my wine. He said, we haven't had that spirit here since 1969. Great line, right? Well, the interviewer was alluding to the fact that wine is fermented and spirits are distilled. Seriously, that's his nitpick. Forget about a song about immortal and infernal hotel workers. No, reality is completely upended because of banter between a guest and a barman in a song. This is so annoying to me because it doesn't even take into account the writer might have other motivations for his word choice. And also, it's still a play on words for heaven's sakes. Wine is alcohol, spirit is alcohol, and the barman is probably a goddamn spirit. That type of criticism is so pedantic and nauseating. However, Don responds to that inane question in a hilarious way. He says, Thanks for the tutorial. And no, 
You're not the first to bring this to my attention, and you're not the first to completely misinterpret the lyrics and miss the metaphor. Believe me, I've consumed enough alcoholic beverages in my time to know how they are made and what the proper nomenclature is. But that line in that song has little or nothing to do with alcoholic beverages. It's a socio-political statement. My only regret would be having to explain it in detail to you, which would defeat the purpose of using literary devices in songwriting and lowered the discussion to some silly and irrelevant argument about chemical processes. If you enjoy these videos and want to support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. My videos will always be free and this is a great way to help me make them better for you. Check out my debut album, The Hollyhobs, on Spotify and Apple Music and click the like button, subscribe and notification bell because that is the best way to get notified when a new video is released. See you next time.